Welcome and thank you for joining us for the online encounter. Whether you're joining us from Omaha or anywhere in any part of the world, we want you to know that you're part of the Love Church family and we're glad that you're here. Make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications for our channel so that you never miss a message from Love Church. Now grab your Bibles and let's get started. Let's pray and let's get in. Lord, it's, a, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be with your people here today. And I just picture your heart. I mean, your, your, your heart for your people is so tender, it's so patient. And even when we fumble through life and we're so stubborn at times, you're so gracious. So many people lost right now, so many people. And yet your heart is breaking to reach them and to open their eyes to the goodness of God and what's, what's there. And so we pray today, speak to us. Many of us in this church, we, we need a word from heaven today. We're hanging on by a string and we need to hear from you. And we pray you would do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, have you ever felt like the odds are stacked against you. <laughs> Anybody? Odds are stacked against you. I know Cap, Cap, Cap and I just talked this week and I'm like, the odds are stacked up against Cap. You have a problem, you have a predicament, you have a financial challenge, you have a relational challenge. And in your mind, it's, it's interesting what the human mind does. We, we, usually humans, we just go into problem-solving mode and I'm trying to figure this out on my own and then I'm like, there's no way and I get overwhelmed and, and I get paralyzed from problems at times. Or maybe, maybe it's not a problem, but there's a project. There's something that, that God's inviting you into in this season and it just seems daunting. Because if you're really honest, here's how you think of yourself. You're like, not me. There's no way, I, I, me? Do you know my family? Do you know how I was raised in the dysfunctional family? There's no way you're calling me to do this, but do you know my past? I don't have, dude, are you kidding me? Like, I, I was raised in a family in poverty, and you're asking me to, to leave this business and help so many people. Are you kidding me? I don't even know how to do that kind of stuff. You ever been there, like overwhelmed? Or, or how about this, like he's, he's calling you to something and you're like, I don't, have, I don't have the resources. I just simply don't have the resources. Now God, if you would show up and give them to me, huh, hello, then we're, hey, maybe we can do something. And what I've found, and, and it's so funny because as I was studying this, <laughs> this passage, I, I, I'm just gonna give you one quick phrase. You guys ready? I, I have, I have like a, I had a million points. I scrapped them all. And I'm just gonna give you one simple, just a simple phrase. Okay, you guys ready for it? Where are my note takers at? Y'all, y'all ready? Okay, good. Here it is, here it is. When the odds are against me, only God gets the glory. The odds are against you. The diagnosis the divorce, the lack of peace, the depression, the world that we live in, the riots just breaking up. It's, it, isn't it interesting how we just, we go from one issue to another. Anybody is like, we just, oh, finally we're over the vid. Okay, sweet. And then there's another thing. And then there's just another, it's just another, it's, yeah. I'm overwhelmed. How many know when we're in that, sometimes that's the best place to be in. <laughs> Why? Because humans try to figure it out. I got it, I got it, I got it. When you don't got it, then God do have it. <laughs> I know, sorry, you're like, I'll pray for it. Let me just pray for his English real quick. <laughs> the story of Gideon is what we've been studying if you've been in your daily reading. And Judges is, isn't it, Judges is an interesting book. It's this cycle of humanity where, you know, we honor God, we bless God, and then things are going good, and then we're like, ah, 
ah, forget God. <laughs> and then I'm kind of doing my own thing, serving other gods. And then, you know, God to get your attention, allows some chaos in your life. You're like, oh, man, what am I doing? And then we cry out to God. God in his mercy, what does he do? He like sends a deliverer to come bail the, you know, the Israelites out, bail us out. And this interesting cycle. And today, I just wanna just share a little bit from Gideon's life. And there's several themes in Gideon. When you think of Gideon, what do you guys normally think of? Gideon's fleece, okay? Yeah, that's part of it. But what I really wanna look at today is this whole idea of Gideon, the, like coming from the poorest family, the most unlikely hero, and God calls him to defeat the Midianites who were strong and, and just dominating and taking over. Talk about an enemy. They're just taking over. And God's like, uh, let me just, let me pick the, <laughs> the poorest, non-educated, uh, ill-equipped, and let me raise him up to wipe out the enemy. And by the way, um, as he's raising up his army, let's just pare down that army. Let's just make, I mean, let's make the odds against him so bad that there's no way that anybody could brag on anybody else but God. I don't know about you, but I like taking credit for everything. <laughs> I remember I used to, when I was playing, I used to, I used to look at the stats. Like, to make, where am I at in stats? I'm third in the stats, cool. Dude, you're in the arena league, bro. Like, that doesn't count. <laughs> don't you like seeing, oh, this is my stats, this is my records. It's like, look at me, I'm really cool, you know? What about if you're just the worst? You got no game. God can never use me. Actually, that's when he can use you. The minute, oh yeah, I'm pretty sweet. Check out my stats. God wants to speak a message to someone here today and here's how you feel. I'm about to tap. I got nothing left. There's no way I can, I can work my way out of it. This is not gonna work out. The, I, I, I'm not the one, it's too overwhelming, perfect. Perfect. It's, where, it's right where he wants you right now. The odds are against you. Perfect. Perfect. You guys wanna read about it? Okay, cool. Judges six. Let's just start in verse one. You wanna do that? Talk to me. Okay, okay, cool. Judges 6, verse 1. If you don't own a Bible, by the way, you can pick one up on the way out, get a reading guide, get in the Bible. Some people think, oh, the Bible's boring, it's confusing. This, this chapter is not boring, it's not confusing. It's actually pretty dope. Yeah. All right, Judges 6, starting in verse 1. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for how many years? Seven. That's interesting, isn't it? How long is bankruptcy? Cool, seven. <laughs> Verse two, the Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places, I circled that, made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. I was just thinking about, you might, you might be so full of shame because of your bankruptcy, you've been hiding for a long time. You, you might have gone through a divorce or you might have done some, whatever it is, that you feel like so terrible about you've been hiding forever. Can I just tell you, God wants to find you and restore you and say, man, I'm not, it's not through. Yep. I'm not through with you. I got, I got something else for you. Right. Verse three, whenever the Israelites planted their crops, put money in their stock account, uh, marauders from Midian Amalek and the people of the east would attack Israel, camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. In other words, the Midianites were like Debo. Okay, you guys didn't get that good. So it's Friday, whatever, okay just jacked all their stuff. That's my food, punk. And just eliminated all of it. It was dominating. Verse five. 
these enemy hordes, I circled enemy, these enemy hordes coming with their livestock in tents were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels. And remember, back in the day, this was like a bunch of tanks rolling into town. No one rolled on camels. A bunch of tanks rolling up into your town, jacking all your stuff. Too numerous to count. And they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced, this hit me so hard, to starvation by the Midianites. <laughs> then, someone say then. Yeah. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. Let me just stick here for a second. Isn't it interesting how most of us humans just kind of toot along in life until something happens and we're like totally starving? Or we, we are, our bank account is just completely eliminated. Or the relationship we were just using as like my life, my identity is removed. And now I'm starving. Isn't it wild? Like it's very few humans that come to God in like a good season of their life. I'm reading this book and it's so cool by Greg Laurie. And it talks about all these rock stars like throughout the generations that had everything. You know, you know how we all, if I just get that house and I get that perfect spouse and I get the 1.2.5 kids <laughs> and the dog that doesn't bark or shed, once I get all that, then I'm good. These rock stars, like they had everything, but then they had nothing. They were totally spiritually bankrupt. And then finally come to this place of crying out. Like mo a lot of these, they're on their deathbed. I mean, they're so jacked up from drugs and alcohol, you know, all this kind of stuff. And they finally get to the, ah, I'm done. Help! And so often I think, like, if I'm God, I'm like, bro, like, no, man, I've been trying to reach you for way too long. <laughs> Isn't it wild that God in his mercy, he's, then the Israelites cried out. What's funny in verse, and I won't read it, but verse seven through 10, the first thing God does is he just sends a prophet to, to, tell, to tell him, I told you so. <laughs> Do you hate those people, by the way? The pro and I always hate, like, Cap's like the prophet that just comes and just tells you, like, in your face. I can tell you, you know, I'm like the lovey-dovey guy, like, make you laugh a little bit. Cap just comes up and he's like, I told you all so. Get right. Let's go. <laughs> I love that. I'm like, Cap, thanks, dude. You, I don't have to do that stuff. You get to do it. <laughs> My wife has this gift. She's got it, too. She just slaps you across the face, but you felt it like a hug. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> he's like, I told you so. I told you, when you get into the land, don't be hanging out with all those other gods. Yeah. It's not gonna work out good for you. Ah, whatever, I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna still chase that money, chase that, you know. And, it, and then they, so, okay, so the prophet's like, bro, <laughs> skip to 11, please. It's so cool. So the prophet comes, slaps him around a little bit, told you so. But then right after, what happens? Then the angel of the Lord shows up. And I, most theologians believe that this was Jesus in a, like a pre-incarnate state, which we call a Christophany. Jesus himself, they believe, shows up right here. He came and sat beneath the great tree at Oprah. He's hang, hung out with Oprah Winfrey. No, he was, okay, it's Ophrah, spelled differently, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiezer. Watch this, Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. <laughs> the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. What? <laughs> so first of all, you would never thresh wheat in like in a low place. What you would do is you would be threshing wheat on the top of a hill and the wind would come and it would blow the shaft away and, and the wheat, the good stuff would, would come down. But they're so scared because they're getting jacked of all their food. He's like, I gotta go hide and get it done. And, and God in his grace, again, the Israelites had stiff arm, God did their own thing and God in his grace, it, I'm just picturing this, Jesus comes up, the angel of the Lord and hangs out, he's just sitting under the tree and there goes Gideon and he just comes to him, he's like, hey, yo, mighty hero, what's up? 
And, me, and I'm just picturing Gideon. Gideon's like, say what? <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Who, me? Mighty hero? You know, right now in, in, in this world, and you could be one of them, God's raising up Gideons in our, in, in our culture right now. Because if, if we're honest, America is in a very similar state. Whether you wanna believe it or not, we are in a very similar state. The, 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 the country was founded upon the absolute truth word of God. And, and God's like, hey, I'm gonna bless you. It's gonna be awesome. Just keep on following me. This is gonna be great. But if you just kind of go do your other, other thing, there's gonna be consequences. And listen, we are right there right now. But don't lose hope because he's calling some mighty heroes in the room right now to stand up and actually do something about it. I, I think we, we're really good. Chris, we're really good, Christian. And if you're a non-Christian in here, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna apologize on behalf of Christians. We're really good about complaining. Talking about, oh, the world's gone. How about we do something about it? That might be something that we want to do. Mighty hero. That's what he's talking. He's saying mighty hero. Mighty hero. The Lord's with you. Look at 13. (laughs) Sir. (laughs) Sir. (laughs) Sir, (laughs) he replied, if the Lord's with us, why has all this happened to us? Uh oh. Y'all read that and did you get stuck on that for a minute? Let me continue to read the rest of the verse. I want to come back to that. And where, so, so again, God's coming to you. Let's do something about this. This world's dark. Uh, the enemy is taking over. Mighty hero, let's go. I'm with you. And Gideon, I like Gideon's honesty. What are you talking about? Where, where are all the miracles? our ancestors told us about. The whole Red Sea deal and Jordan River, all these miracles. What about those? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites? It's honest. I love that. And, and you're here today, and here's, here's, here's your question. I deal with this all the time, and it's a good question. If God is so good, why did he allow this to happen to me? God's abandoned me. I've come to church for so long. Love love church. God loves me? Well, why did that happen? And let me just say, and you've heard me say this a lot. I have to keep on bringing this to you because your friends and your coworkers and your neighbors are asking this question. We need to have the answer. The answer is this. That was the, the state of the world and the circumstances that we find ourselves in, it was never God's intention. If you go back to the Bible, God's original intention, there was no sin, no beef. He was hanging with us in the garden. We were going to work, taking walks with God. It was beautiful. You wanna know his intention? That's what it was. But for us to have a genuine relationship with God, he gave us choice. We as humans blew it, and now sin spreads throughout the rest of the world and now you have all kinds of chaos and accidents and, and, and abortions and divorce and chaos and all kinds of stuff going on. And that we blame God. It's us. It's us. It's tragic. It's, it's the result of sin. And, and really, it's overall sin that's invited to this. Ca- now, some, if, can we be honest? Some of it, we've brought on ourselves. Not all of it. There's a lot of circumstances that are out. It's, we didn't deserve it. We didn't choose it. That's just the result of a chaotic world. But can I be honest? Some of the stuff that I still deal with today, it was my choice. I knew better and I just did something different. And yet I say, God, it's your fault. Huh? He's abandoned. <laughs> He's abandoned. He's abandoned us. This is so wild. It's like God doesn't even respond to his question. <laughs> Did you notice that when you're reading that? If I'm God, I'm like, Talk, me? Wait, hold on. You, you're saying that I abandoned you, bro? What are we talking about? I gave you clear directions. You're the one that did it. God doesn't even defend himself. 
He's so patient and so kind. Don't you, anybody grateful for a merciful and patient God who is so patient with us? He's like, you know what? I'm not gonna get back up in your face. I'm actually gonna try to help you. Some, some of us in here right now, God's been trying to get your attention for so long. You've been stiff arming him, talking about blaming God for all the problems in your life, and he's still pursuing you. It's so cool. 14, then the Lord turned to him. He did, again, he doesn't even respond. He's just like, he turned to him. Sorry, bro, I got, a, I, got a, I got a calling for your life. Turns him, he said, go with the strength you have. Some of you barely got to church today. That's okay, go with the strength you have. And rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Here's a question. Who is God sending you to in this season? What is he calling you to? What is he sending you to right now? What problem in the culture is he stirring in your heart to do something about? And you say, it's, it's, it's too much. I'm overwhelmed. There's no way I can do it. Where is he sending you right now? One of my favorite things in the world, dude, I, I like to stay in shape, so I go to the gym. But you know what I do before? I'll, I'll literally park before I walk into the gym. And here's my, here's my prayer. God, I don't want to be that weird pastor that's always like annoying going up to people and interrupting their workouts. But you know what? If you have an assignment for me, can you just send me and open up a door and have people come to me? That's my prayer. (laughs) The other day, it was like, at the end of my workout, I'm I'm stretching out. I'm stretching down. Thanks, Kyle. I don't know where Kyle's at. He he makes me stretch after my workouts. Hate him. Love him at the same time. And I'm stretching down. And this guy, no, no joke, comes out. He's like, are you the pastor at Love Church? It's always weird. It's like, who wants to know? You know, it's like, <laughs> what do we do? Uh, what do we do? And he comes up to me and he goes, hey, man. And I don't know what it is, but he just spilled his whole life. You know, my wife left me, this whole deal. And I got kids and, and you know, and I'm like, we're, we're just breaking down in prayer in the middle of this gym on the stretch floor. I want, you know what? I just want to help this guy. And I don't know his past. I don't know where he's been. I don't know what choices he's made. I don't know what he, you know, did he do deserve it or his wife just bail? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Guess what? God wants something better for him. Let's go break out in prayer right now. Where is he sending you? He's like, oh, I'm going to send you. There you go. Gone. I'm sending you. <laughs> so here we go. Verse 15, but Lord. <laughs> Anybody pick that up when you're reading that? Total oxymoron. It's like jumbo shrimp. You know, it's like, no, <laughs> virtual reality. <laughs> like, what? No, that doesn't, you can't put those words together. But Lord, if he is your Lord, there is no but. Yeah. But you see his excuse? We all have it. He says, but Lord, Gideon replied, how, how can I? How how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I'm the least in my entire family. Is that how you feel? There's no way I can do anything about this. Do you know my family? I'm not the brightest, I always say, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Bree's like, yes, that is true about you. Anybody have that thought? Like, there's no way. Here's what I, here's what I was studying this. I, I, I thought of two things. Number one, on one hand, it's good because I believe with all my heart, God uses most powerfully the most humble. So on one hand, it's good. On the other hand, though, when we don't know our identity and we're insecure, and we're trying to like go with the ways of the world to find our identity and how we look, what we have, what others think about us, and that's how we receive our identity, that paralyzes Christians to actually moving forward and doing something big for God. So there's a, there, there's a humility, great. Lack of identity, not great. And now he's sitting here going like, Are you, you picked the wrong guy. Mighty hero, you want me to go fight the Midianites? Bro, I got no game at all. Perfect. What was the phrase I taught you? When the odds are against me, only 
God gets the glory. Perfect. You know why he's picking Gideon? You know why he's picking you? That's why. The Bible says not many, like, uh, what, what did Paul say? Like, not many wise, not many, you know, are called by God. Why is that? Because then God gets the glory. Not many. How can I rescue him? Verse 16, but the Lord said to him, I'll be with you. If you got God on your side, you don't need anybody else. You don't need anything else. Because listen to what he says, I'll be with you. And you'll destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. How awesome is that? What? God's math is so cool, man. I love it. It's like, oh yeah, you got God? Don't matter. It's like fighting one dude. You're gonna work him over. The, the rest of the chapter, man, there's so many good things in here. Can I, just, can I just talk a little bit about the rest of this chapter? So Gideon feels insecure, incapable, unable to perform on what God's calling him to do. So he asked for a couple signs. And the first sign is pretty, pretty cool. He's like, hey, can you stay here, angel of the Lord, uh, and stuff? I wanna go like make an offering and bring it back. So he gets some unleavened bread. He doesn't have time, so he's hurrying up. He like has a, like a, a lamb that he, so bread and lamb, and then some broth. And he brings it, and brings it to the angel, and they have a communion service real quick. Talk about communion that we just had. And, and then the angel like puts like this stick on it, and, and, and it, like flames up and then the angel like like goes up in, into the mix. Can you imagine? Like, ah, uh, well, that's a pretty good sign that that was from God right there. <laughs> so wild. And then he tells Gideon, hey, uh, you know, your dad, Joash, he's been serving these foreign gods, Baal and the Asherah. Here's what I want you to do. Um, as you move forward, you gotta consecrate yourself and go wipe out those gods because that's why you're in the predicament you're in right now. So because he's a little fearful, what does he do? He does it in the nighttime and he takes out, he's obedient. Hey, how many of you are fearful sometimes? Okay, let's be honest real quick. But how many are you obedient? See, he, see we, we had this discussion on, on our Friday small group. Like was Gideon, just was he being kind of fearful or was he being wise? Yes. <laughs> he wipes out... <laughs> In the, in the dark, and the next day, people are freaking out, like, oh my goodness, who did this to the, the idol of Baal and Ashtoreth? And, and Gideon does it. And then the very next chapter in, in Judges 7, he asked for another sign. No, excuse me, it's at the end of six. He asked for another sign. And this is where the fleece is, remember? He's like, okay, um, can I get another sign? And, and, and I like that Gideon, even though he's fearful, he's asking for confirmation. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, by the way. If God's inviting you into something that is crazy and it's big, and, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for confirmation. He says, okay, this little wool fleece right here, I'm gonna leave it out, God. And if, it's, if the fleece is filled with moisture, but all the ground is dry, I'll know it's you. So the next morning, he gets up, what does he do? He sees the wool fleece, and it says that he squeezed it and it filled like a bowl of water. He's like, awesome, God's with me. He's, I know this is him. But don't get mad with me. Can you do something really cool? And now tomorrow morning, can I wake up and now the wool fleece is dry and everything else on the ground is due? God, please. God's so gracious. He's like, I got you. Yeah, I'm gonna confirm that too. And he wakes up next day and sure enough, the wool fleece, dry, everything else is due. Oh, thank God, yes, you're leading me. This is dope. We're gonna get these Midianites, let's go. God's on our side, let's go. He's getting their armies together, it's like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And, and this guy Gideon, great, mighty hero, gets 32,000 troops to go with him. Yeah, problem, the Midianites have 135,000. I'm no math guy, what is that? One to four or five, I don't know. Come on, math people. Where's Nick Obico when you need him? And love kids, serving the kids. Great, dude, I need you. I'm all manned here. 
I'm out, man, God just told me to go do it, but I, the numbers aren't, aren't adding up. It's so crazy. Right now, I'm in this, this um, opportunity I'm praying about so we can reach more people, but there's $5 million that, that just needs to drop from the sky right now. And I'm like, how is that gonna happen? God's like, I'm, a, I'm the mathematician. You don't worry about it. If it's me and I'm confirming it, you keep on walking forward. I'm like, ah, oh. 32,000, 135,000, I don't know. When the odds are against me, <laughs> only God gets the glory. So he's like, oh boy, okay, I guess we'll do it. He rolls up on the set. <laughs> and let's look at, go to uh, Judges 7 now, verse two. Look at this. <laughs> so cool. The Lord said to Gideon, hey bro, you got too many warriors with you. Hold on, wait. I got 32,000. There's 135,000 over there. And God comes to you and he says, no, I got, you got too much. But I want you to pay attention. This is super big. You got too many warriors with you. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they save themselves by their own strength. Oh. So that's why my bank account is dwindling and my personnel is dwindling and the people that used to be with me are leaving. And that's why this area of my life is being pruned. Because if it was walking in my strength and my abundance and God did something good, here's what would happen. Yeah, God did it. But really, I kind of did. Because I'm kind of cool. God's like, nah, we're not even gonna make that. We're not even gonna give you that temptation. We're just gonna go ahead and eliminate some, some, some people. So you remember the first thing he did? And in, in verse three, therefore, tell the people, whoever's timid or afraid, you may leave the mountain and go home. <laughs> it's so cool. Which, by the way, if you're trying to build a team, it's probably pretty smart to do. You want people that are all in, man. Like, we're going this way, I'm all in. He's like, if, you, if you're scared, go home. And out of the, the 32,000, the 32, you know how many went home? 22,000. Oh, snap. You imagine when Gideon right here? <laughs> Oh no, now it's 10 to 135,000, 10,000. I'm like, wait, did that fleece thing, was that like just a figment of my imagination? <laughs> was I like hallucinating when I saw the angel of the Lord with the, you know, the, the food firing up and him bouncing up to, am I just high right now? Like what is happening? <laughs> is, this, is this real? Verse four, but the Lord told Gideon, there's still too many. <laughs> Say what? There's still too many. Bring them down to the spring and I'll test them to determine who will go with you and who will not. You guys remember this, this story? So this test was pretty wild. He takes all the soldiers over to this area to, to get a drink and out of the 10,000, most of them got down on their knees and just started drinking. You know, to kind of took their time. Took their old. But there was 300 of the soldiers that got kind of like in a stance like this. They cupped a little water. You know what I'm talking about? Just slurping it down. But here's what, the way I'm picturing it is like these guys were like ready to go. They were alert. They weren't just totally consumed in their own world. Talking about, uh. We watched Wally the other day. Remember Wally? Like the guys are just drinking. You know. I'm picturing I got 300 warriors, man. Ooh, I now I got a squad. So put yourself in Gideon's shoes. Some of you are there right now. Like, it feels like there's no way that I'm gonna get through this problem, this predicament, this project in my life. It seems like everything's being stripped away. It's not adding up, and I don't know what to do. And here I am, I got 300 to 135,000. Oh! God's like, well, when the odds are against me, then only I can get the glory. So I'll tell you what, um, I'll give you one last confirmation. 
And I don't have time. I oh, mean, I wish I had time to tell you the rest of the story. But you guys already read it, so that's all good. But let me just remind you what you read. God gives him one last wink. And I love last winks. I've been praying for confirmation on this next project. And there's little winks going on and open doors. And <clears throat> one of the winks, he's like, okay, 300 to 135,000. But the beauty of this, I'm gonna give you one last wink. Here's what I want you to do. If you're still fearful, take Pura. <laughs> what a name. Take your homie Pura. Pura. And roll into the Midianite camp. Okay, just kind of sneak attack and just listen. And as they get into the camp, there's these two Midianites talking. And one had a dream, had a vision of this barley loaf tumbling down the, the mountain into a Midianite tent and smashing it. He's like, this has got to be Gideon. All the homies, they're going to smoke us. And Gideon's like, okay, baby. It's like final confirmation. And the rest of the story is wild. He divides the 300 up into three different groups. They got like a trumpet in one hand and like a, like a torch and like a, I don't know, like a, what do you call it? Like a vessel, a clar, a clay jar or whatever. He's like, all right, at the same time, we're gonna blow the trumpets and then smash these torches with a clay jar around it. And they do it, and the Midianites go crazy, and the Lord gets them all confused, and they start killing themselves. I mean, is it the most wild thing? God just gets the, it's the beauty of it. When the odds are against you, God gets the glory. God just stirs these people up. They're killing them. 135, just wipe themselves out. Why, why do I tell you this today? Why is this important to me? Because the odds are against you. Matter of fact, can I just say this? The odds are against all of us right now. You are the minority in the culture. Dark and evil and demonic is running rampant. The Bible actually says that, that Satan is, is actually the prince of the air. He is. God, it's such a wild thought. God's sovereign, yeah, but the enemy is running rampant. But the beauty is, in God's economy, it doesn't matter how it looks on the outside, he's gonna win. And I wanted to bring that to you today. So much more to it. But let me pray for you. Anybody, is this encouraging anybody right now? You go, you go, man. <laughs> And let me just say this. Some of you that everything's going groovy right now, just put this in your back pocket for when the season comes. Lord, thanks for this church and the simplicity of your word. And we're all Gideons to some extent where we're fearful and overwhelmed. And all of us in different circumstances, the odds are against us. The beauty though is that's when you can show up and it can be only you that gets the glory. And so even now, God, we pray now for the church. I'm thinking of all the different scenarios in the room right now. The one who is having trouble even getting out of bed. We pray now as they're flat on their back, God, would you do a miracle and get them over the enemy of depression? The, the people right now wondering how they're gonna pay their mortgage. Would you just move in a powerful way? I'm thinking of my friend that I just met. I mean, that it, it's a, to him, it's an insurmountable, relational. I mean, in his heart, he's wrecked because of his marriage, his children, his young kids. Would God, by your grace and your mercy, can you just show up and do what only you can do that would make no sense to the outside world? And would you use that testimony in a powerful way for your glory? In Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I just wanna end our opportunity with a, an opportunity to respond. And I'm just gonna share with you one, one last verse, if I could. It's out of, a, it's actually the very first, very last Scripture from Judges chapter 21. And it says this, Judges chapter 21, verse 25, it says, in those days, Israel had no king. <laughs> and all the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. 
And I, and I promise you, man, I've never, in my 47 years on this planet, I've never seen this more true in our culture than ever before. And, you know, we can judge people, but really it, we need to have a heart to go, man, people are lost. And maybe if, maybe, maybe some of you in here right now, God's brought you to this place and here, here's how you've done life, your whole life. You've just done what's ever right in your own eyes. Can I just tell you, um, you can have an opportunity today to make Jesus your king and now actually have a playbook that is absolute truth. It can happen today. Let's stand together. And I wanna give you this opportunity. The question would be, who's your king? Who's your king? The Bible says that Jesus Christ of Nazareth went to a a cross, he was brutally murdered, crucified on that cross, he was buried. Three days later, he rose from the grave and you say, well, what does that have to do with me? Well, God's perfect, we're not. He's the one that came to this planet, lived the perfect life. He willingly went to the cross to pay for the sin that I owed, that you owed. We don't just waltz into heaven by our good works, we we are graciously received because of our faith in Christ. And I wanna make an invitation for anybody in here right now. You say, man, I've, I've been my own king. I've done what's, whatever I've wanted to in my life, but now I wanna submit my life to King Jesus. Ask for forgiveness. I wanna be forgiven, go to heaven one day and start today with him being Lord, truly Lord. Not but Lord, but yes, Lord. Whatever you say, I'm gonna obey. I believe that you have the right way. I'm placing all my faith in you, Jesus. In a minute, the band's gonna play a song and this is gonna be your opportunity to come forward. I'll lead you in a prayer. It's a very simple prayer, God. (laughs) I'm done. No more King Todd. I'm giving my life to you. Fill in the blank, whoever your name is. Could be listening online. This could be for you as well. No more. I, I, I I wanna surrender my life to Christ and allow you to run every part of my life. You say, man, I don't know. (laughs) You don't know what I've done, pastor. (laughs) I would tell you, you don't know what I've done. God can forgive anything if you allow him to. Simply submit, surrender today. He'll change your life. Change your life. Give you peace that passes understanding. Give you purpose. You can be young, you can be old. Somewhere in between, God's reaching his hand out to you. Will you reach back to him? So church, just begin to pray. God's speaking to you by faith. You come forward, make peace with God. Begin this love relationship with him. Church, begin to pray and band, go ahead and play.
Spirit of the Lord is just drawing people. It's cool how God works. He's, he's not a headlock God. He's, he's wooing people. He's bringing people to him. Anybody else here in the auditorium, listening online, want to join these, these guys as they just, they're laying it down. The beauty is, talk about everything changing now, eternal destination. Habits, hangups, everything's changing. And if you're ready, just pray this prayer out loud. Mean it from your heart. God's gonna hear you and change your life. Say, Lord God, open up my heart. I invite you inside to be my God, to be my savior, to be my friend. Yeah. Forgive me of all my sin. Wash me clean. I've decided today to follow you, Jesus, from this day forward. I'm all in. <laughs> Fill me with your spirit. Power, love, sound mind. For your glory and to help a ton of people. <laughs> yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, come on. Amen. Proud of you, man. Thanks again for checking out this video. If you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening here at Love Church, hit the subscribe button or download the Love Church app, which is free on any app store. Have a great week as you continue to experience God's best for your life.